What's going on guys? So in this video we're going to be taking a look at my old PlayStation X. Haven't used it in a few years but now that there's more information about installing the Modbo mod chips into them I thought it'd be a fun project to refurbish it and see if we can get it to go again. Um, I can't actually remember what was wrong with it. I think the internal, there's eight megabytes of internal flash in this which is incidentally the same as a uh, memory card so I think that's corrupted as well because I was messing around with it and I think I erased it by mistake so we'll see how that goes uh, so yeah if you haven't seen one of these systems before this is what it looks like it's pretty big it's a PlayStation 2 with a DVR and a DVD player built into it you can also burn DVDs too so there's two optical pickups in the drive. Here's the back of the unit. And I've got some inputs and outputs. Um, this has a D-terminal connector for component video, which isn't used outside of Japan. So I just modified just this socket here off an old TV into it. But I do actually have a D-terminal to RCA cable now, but I didn't before. This one I bought from eBay a long time ago. It took months to get here. That's the original price. It's like, that's that? $20. Cost me more than that because of shipping and stuff. You can see the fan down in there. So, uh, this is a 110 volt, well, actually a 100 volt system. Um, so, I have a step down transformer for it. So, yeah, let's see if we can uh, let the magic smoke out. Uh, so, here we have an error. That's what I was trying to turn on. Nothing. Game, nothing. Home, nothing. It even has support for Memory Stick Duo, which is pretty cool, but you can't save PS2 games to it. The PS2 side of this is completely separate to the um, the DVR side, so I can get into that a bit later, a bit more information about it. But um, basically with these systems is the hard drive inside it has um, both custom firmware and a, a custom security sector on the hard drive so you can't just swap the hard drive out when they die and the whole system is based around the XMB which is the operating system for it uh, it's cross media bar if you remember like the PS3 same software but this is much older than that this is like a precursor to it so if we ever get this up and going again you'll see or if you look up videos about this system you'll see it looks almost the same as a ps3 but predates it by i don't know six years or something i'm gonna tear this thing down and see why it's blinking like that why i can't focus yeah i'll be back in a little bit Alrighty, so i whipped the side rails off um to remove them you just have to pull the little grommet off the end of this thing and then you can unclip it using that little retention clip there and the two sides slide off and then there's a bunch of screws in the sides there so that'll allow us to get to the rest of the system turn over one hand to weigh about six kilos or something like that it's about the same as the original ps3 um, oh, i'm scratching it so then on the bottom Similar setup to, well, oh, it's really blown out, but similar setup to the PlayStation 2. You've got all the little covers over the screws. So there's one, two, three, four, five, and six underneath these two feet. These ones are glued on, and then you've got two back screws there. Nothing behind the front door. And then from memory, because I haven't pulled this apart in like six years um i think the bottom comes off some more screws holding the top on and then the whole thing comes apart in like two or three pieces so yeah alrighty. so i got the bottom case off it's just down there a uh, bunch of screws you got long ones fat ones short ones skinny ones but here's the inside and here's the various things that i have done um that's for the Video output, I'll probably just remove that. I don't need that anymore. This system is a little bit different to a standard one. There's a bunch of different versions of this console and there's a there's two main. There's the 5 series and the 7 series. The 7 series is just a bigger hard drive basically and then the other number at the end. So this one's a 5500. So that's the last or second last revision of the console. I think I went up to 57, I can't remember. Anyway, and then you have the 7500, which is just the uh, bigger hard drive. 
This one's 128 gigs, cheaper version, and it didn't come in silver, if I remember correctly. They came in two main colors, this color and silver, like the same kind of silver as the Platinum PlayStation 2, but just a bit glossy. I think it's a refurbished unit, I'm not too sure, or yeah, it's had something fixed on it at the factory because we've got um, extra little things thrown in here. Here we have something. Um, not too sure what it is. It's only got two wires, which is a bit weird. Um, and they're starting to go a bit crusty. Yeah, not too sure what that is because it's only got two wires to it. It's got three little components right there. I don't know. No idea what that is. The main bit up here where this cable's going to, that's the main, um, up here is where I ran those bodge wires for that adapter to read it with a PS2 memory card reader. I'm not too sure what's going on. It's probably something to do with that, but I think from memory, one of these cables is damaged, probably this one, and it's not communicating properly with the video board, and that's why it's getting these weird errors. And we got this little FPGA here. I don't know what it does. It's got an actual little card connector on it, so. Okay, so after pulling it apart a bit more and getting the video board out, um, yeah, I think what's happened here is there's a lot of stuff that's not connected. And I think that's because some of these flex cables are damaged. One of the optical pickups isn't plugged in. Um, I probably just threw it back together when I gave up on it. So that's why um, it's a bit corroded. So I should be able to fix that up. Um, some of these flex cables, I'll just have to replace them. Luckily, they aren't... FPCs, they're just normal ribbon cables, which you can pull out of pretty much anything, printers, stuff like that. So I have an old printer floating around and I think I have a bag of these somewhere. Otherwise I can just look up the part number on these cables, I think. They're very brittle because it's so old. Some of the chips in this are dated 2002, like this cycling FPGA here. I'm assuming that was added from the factory and I just lost a screw. Yeah, I'm gonna pull the board out and then we'll go over all the cables and make sure what needs to be replaced and maybe try and get them to work for now or source some replacements. Okay, so here is the one half of it taken apart. I think from memory this had, the main issue this had after being messed around with was the tuner wasn't working. So it came up with a service error when you booted the console. Um, so down in here, that's where the power supply is. Um, that's the main tuner. I think it's satellite, maybe. I'm not sure. I know it's analog. I don't know if it has support for digital. If you boot it up into the DVR mode, which is the X, the cross media bar thing, looks like a PS3, um, and the DVD burner, which is the other laser in here, if that doesn't work, because it needs to read the disc first, if that doesn't work, it won't read any games or anything. It won't do anything, because it first reads from this head to see what kind of disc it is, and then it switches over to PlayStation 2 mode and reads using the PlayStation 2 optical pickup, which is a bit weird, a bit janky the way it works, that it's switching between two different modes, but I don't know, maybe it was just easy to do it that way. But you can boot the console directly into PS2 mode using um, Freemic boot or hopefully a mod chip, if I can wire one up to get it to work. I might end up putting a mod chip in this anyway and seeing if I can bypass my botched attempt at messing around with this thing. So this is a PS2 memory card and these are some wires. This flash chip on here is the same part that's in PS2 memory cards and it houses the main boot file for PS2 mode, I think. Can't remember. Probably leave something in the description about it. I really can't remember about this stuff. Um, it's been a long time. So what I'm probably going to do is I'm going to reassemble this and see if I can at least get it booting up to a black screen, which is where the hard drive doesn't work. And then we'll go from there. This cable down here was unplugged. That's the um, parallel ATA for the hard drive. The memory of these systems won't even do anything if the hard drive isn't detected at all. And it needs to be able to detect at least the firmware on the board, which is fine. 
This drive's just dead, full of bad sectors, doesn't load up. It does load the security sector and the firmware, which is fine, which is all we need. We don't need the disk to work. Um, if one of these fails, you can get the 20 gig or the 40 gig PlayStation 2 official hard drive that came with Final Fantasy has the same firmware and this it'll allow this to boot and then you I think you can put the XMB back on the drive if you mess around with the way the partitions are made up. <sighs> that was a mouthful. Anyway, alrighty, so I've got everything connected back up again. Um, some of the cables, I had to jimmy them in there because they're all broken. Reconnected the optical drive and everything. And put everything back together, just enough so it'll start. So, here goes nothing. Okay, so the initial boot up, where it just spins the drive up to make sure it's there. It's still in standby. Hmm, that's kind of expected. Uh, oh, there's a cable not plugged in. So funny if this was for video, but it looks like it's for Ethernet. Yeah, still no signal. Alrighty, so it's a bit hard to see on the phone screen, but here we have the diagram for the PSX 7000. Remember, this is a 5500, so it's a bit newer. And here is the main diagram and the mod chip it is for is for the Modbo 750. The Modbo 750 is a updated version of the Modbo 3 from about 2006 that's going off uh, Quaid's website. Yeah, it's got the exact same pinout as the Modbo 3. And luckily, the Modbo 3, 4, and 5 are all basically the same chip with just slightly variations in firmware and stuff like that. But the Modbo 5s I have are running the last official firmware that is version 1.93 and it's just the slightly modified one that allows booting I think it allows auto boot from a hard drive but it won't be this hard drive because it's a different interface but I believe it allows auto boot from a USB hard drive so that's handy and going off this pinout here if we have a look over here at this guy um, see that's the pinout and the Dude I was chatting to on Instagram, I'll put his name up here, I don't know if he posts anything or not. Um, he's doing the same system as me right now, said it worked on his, and by looking at this chip and the pinout for it, and then coming across here to this guy, which is hard to see, because I won't fucking focus, same pinout, so, well it looks like the same pinout, the traces are the same, so we'll just need to run some wires for this chip, and then, and then the big... Sony chip on the other side, which I'm assuming is just under here. All these systems are pretty much the same. There's only slight variations between them, hard drive and little tweaks here and there, like not all systems have this, and not all systems have, um, oh, I forgot what it was now. I don't know, there's something else that some of them don't have, but whereas others do, all sorts of stuff, just slightly different revisions. And yeah, I was right, this is for the DVD, for the DVR side, this is for the PlayStation side. Um, and I haven't got it apart anymore, but, but now the system's actually booted up. It's got no video output at the moment, um, even on composite, I'm, uh, even on component, I'm on component right now. I doubt it's the cables. Yeah, because I'm pretty sure this is, the that memory stuffed so yeah it housed like the same boot file that freemic boot does and i think uh, what i was doing was seeing if i could install freemic boot straight to the system but it did not work um but it's fine um yes anyway i'll be back soon or later whenever i get the mod chip installed i probably won't film installing the mod chip because that takes time anyway see ya